things about people who have to stay to the agents. They might be able to hear you very quiet. Am I? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, sorry guys. <laughs> <laughs> can you give us a thumbs up if you can hear me? Sorry, sorry guys. Come on. <laughs> I get told off by the office. <laughs> um, our first question is, what is the best time of day to view a house? Um, I thought that would probably depend on the house, I think. Um, there's a, I, I don't think there's a set. I, I, if I was buying a house, I wouldn't go and see it at a, a set time. But it would depend on the house. So if you if you have some concerns about the location that you might worry about um, what it's like at nine o'clock in the morning if it's close to a school or something like that, then I would view it at that time or at least drive past it at that time. Um, if you want to see the sun in the garden at a particular time of day, it's great saying that you know the garden's south facing, but a lot of the time you actually want to go to the to the um, property to see exactly where the sun is, when you would want it in the garden. And obviously it changes at time of year, depending on the time of year that you're buying and selling. Um, but I think it does really depend on the property. But one thing I would say, certainly, if you are looking at uh, a property and you're having you know two viewings rather than, than one, make sure that they are different times of day so that you do get a different, um, I suppose, different aspect of the house depending on whether, you know, if you go in the morning and in the afternoon, and then I would always encourage people as well to have a drive past in the evening or at the weekend, see, because properties, you know, can appear differently um, at different times of day to different sorts of people, so. Yeah, I would say not just the house as well, but the area. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. I would agree, yeah. Um, the next question, how do I get the best price for my property? Do you have any tips or tricks? Just a few. <laughs> well, that's what we do, isn't it? You know, our aim is to maximise the price that we get for, for our clients. So a um, really simple one is not accept the first offer. Make sure that you are trying to create competition within within the market and make sure that you, you know, speaking to numerous people and that you've got an estate agent working on your behalf who is motivated to extract maximum cash. A lot of people don't necessarily think about it like this, but your property is your biggest tax-free asset. So you want to extract as much capital out of that as you possibly can. So getting the maximum price is really, really important. It's not probably something that I can talk about on a, on a few minutes here, but it's it, you know, everything that we do when we're marketing property is geared up to extracting maximum cash, creating competition amongst buyers and making sure that we you know, are happy that they're you know, paying what they would be willing to pay for a property is one of those things that's really important that, that you have. I think, you know, in summary, have a strategy as to how you're gonna you know, go about doing that. Yeah. Um, okay, question number three. Do you have any advice for first time buyers in the current market? Um, yes, I do have some advice for the first time buyers. First, my advice for first time buyers, incidentally, in any, any market is go and view as many properties as you can. Because I think as a first time buyer, you need to experience properties, sometimes properties that you think might not be for me or I didn't like that on the photos. Go and have a look because you never know until you walk through the front door of a property. And as a first time buyer, if you view a few properties that you think might not be right, then it would help you rule them out or maybe see aspects within those properties that you think actually this is really good, I want this in my um, first home. So as first time buyers, my advice is always you know, go out and have a, have a look. In the current market, what I would say to first time buyers is make sure that you're speaking to the estate agents who cover the area that you want to buy in on a regular basis. Don't just assume that, you know, you ring them up and they put you on the mailing list that they're, des that they're definitely going to, you know, ring you. What I would say to any buyer, not just first time buyers in this market, but is get to know your estate agent and make sure that you're ringing them proactively on a regular basis because the market is in such a place that there's numerous buyers chasing not very many homes, so you've got to make sure that you're front and centre of, of the estate agents, um, I suppose, you know, mindset that if they're going out something, they're thinking of you first, and that will really help. So make sure you get to know your estate agent, make sure that you speak to them on a regular basis, and that might mean that you have to put the phone up to them, them rather than the other way around, which is you know, unusual for people that have uh, you know, bought houses before. And the other thing that I would say, um, First time buyers will often lean on parents or people that have been through the process before for advice, particularly advice around negotiating offers or how things should be done. The way the market is at the moment, the advice that 
somebody has through you know, five years ago experience of buying isn't necessarily relevant. So don't rely too much on um, on people's advice if they haven't bought in the current market because it is a very different market in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, question number Oh, I'm getting all mixed up on my numbers, so <laughs> <laughs> um, how do you ensure a quick completion? Be prepared, in a very short answer. Um, and again, like I said to the first time buyers before, um, you know, get to know your estate agent. As a house buyer or house seller, because this works both ways, get to know your solicitor. Don't be afraid to pick the phone up to your solicitor. Um, if you're selling, you can be prepared by appointing your solicitor right at the outset. Um, if you're buying, you can make sure that you're pushing everyone in the chain. We just had um, quite a big property complete and the buyer took a very proactive approach to pushing that transaction um, through. They actually said to me when they made the offer on the property, she said, I'm going to be like a dog with a bone. Now that to us, as estate agents and to the house seller, is like music to our ears because we want, we want transactions to go through quickly. House buyers and sellers normally want transactions to go through quickly, but both the house buyers and the house sellers have to take some part and some responsibility for um, making sure that what they can do, that they're returning paperwork and that sort of thing, they do quickly, but also that they are making sure that they keep in contact with their solicitor and you know, we'll, we'll keep in contact with them naturally and we'll push the solicitor. But often, if we ring a solicitor, they might not ring us back. If their client rings us, the more that rings them, the more more uh, implied to, to ring them back. So make sure that you take a proactive approach. Be prepared and be proactive. And uh, this one's a bit Christmassy uh, as it's December. <laughs> um, what would you advise or advise um, anyone who wants to get on the market in the run up to Christmas, or the people who want to get marketed in the new year? Right. So. Um, Advice for, for people who are wanting to get onto the market now is would be that if you've got Christmas decorations up, that's absolutely fine. If a house comes on the market in December and there's Christmas decorations up in, in those um, photos, okay, it's not ideal, but it can be done and people are still actively looking. And the fact of the matter is, there's not very much competition. So, you know, that would, by my uh, opinion, still make it a good time to sell. Um, if you do go onto the market in the run up to Christmas, make sure that you have some more photos done in the new year. You don't want, on the even on the 6th of January, to still have a property that's showing on right move with the Christmas decorations on. You want to make sure that that's all done and, and all sorted. So, you know, if you are wanting to go onto the market, you might have seen something or you might have you know, just decided that now's the time. That's fine, make that decision. Take, you know, the proactive approach, get it all sorted, but then make sure that when you're talking to your estate agent, that they are going to come back and take some more photos once the Christmas decorations have gone down. And if you're wanting to um, get on the market in, in January, you've probably got a window now to get everything sorted before the Christmas decorations go up. But I would not be putting the property on the market first week of January that's got Christmas decorations up. You know, we would, that's something that we definitely uh, look to avoid. So it goes you know, a bit of preparation again. Yeah. Wonderful, that was all our questions. If you've got any for next week, send them in. You can email them to us at Hello Moving Works or you can pop them in the chat below and we will answer them next week. And if you agree or disagree with anything that we've said, then you know <laughs> please please drop us a comment as well. Thanks very much for watching. Cheers.